Peace and Black Power family, this is your host Raheem Shabazz and we are here for another episode of Necessary Blackness Podcast and today we have a special guest in the building and unless you've been living under a rock, you're not familiar with the intellectual extremist, my brother, aka, come on, <laughs> RZA, I self lord and master, come on. and that's RZA Islam to y'all. So, Rizzo, welcome to Necessary Blackness Podcast. Man, I'm honored, man. It's good to be with my brother again. I've been seeing you. You've been building, doing good work per usual. So, again, I'm just honored to be here. Man. You in Atlanta, man. This is yes. almost like your second home. Why are you just going to move down here? Oh, man, here we go. See, look. <laughs> Every time I, I see you, you in Atlanta. That's a fact. That's a fact. I actually have some land here. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I had, uh, me and my family bought some land, I think, almost three years ago now. Okay, not with the hair out the farm, this is something separate, No, yeah, this is right? before. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, mm-hmm. so you, you was at, ahead of the game, oh, three yeah, years yeah. before us. We're moving, we're moving quietly, but we're moving. Okay, yes, okay. Sir. Yeah, because I know you was down here uh, with the hair out the farms and mm-hmm. the event that they had. And the last time I seen you, uh, we was actually on the land. Yeah, absolutely. And before that, I seen you in Orlando, and then before that, we was at uh, another farm, mm-hmm. black owned. Come on. And uh, we was out there building. So I ain't going to waste no time. We're going to get right into it. Yes, sir. Now, the mainstream media, they censored you, mm-hmm. banned, and removed you from a lot of uh, social media sites, as well as mischaracterized you. Of course. And um, you continue to fight. So everything they're doing, they're doing it in vain, right? Yes, sir. So my question to you is, where do you get the strength mm. to fight against principalities in high places? <laughs> because, you know, many of us, the little bit of things, we just, uh, you know what, this is too much. I'm not dealing with this today. True. You got to deal with this every day in each and every way. So mm. I, I, I just need to know and let other people that may find themselves in similar situations, where do you get the strength and what advice would you give them? First thing I'll say is, brother, to be honest, our ancestors went through a whole lot worse. Absolutely. That's the first thing. Um, because we kind of get it twisted at times that we face adversity, we face issues, we go through trials and have problems. We think what we are going through is the worst. So when we look at history and look at the comparison, what they went through was so horrific to where this is really a cakewalk, this is easy. Uh, that's one thing I have in my mind is I always look at what our people had to go through. Mm-hmm. So if I'm not going through anything, then I'm clearly not doing enough work. Um, but I get strength from Almighty God, Allah, Supreme Being, number one. I study the examples of all of our ancestors that came before us. Mm-hmm. So I look at, of course, Prophet Nobu Drew Ali, the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, all of those, and the sisters as well, all of our tribes, all of our groups, all of our nations, and I study what they did. I study those who quit versus those who persevered and continued. Mm. And I look to see, am I going for this mediocre status of just being somebody, you know, like some cats out there who just want to be famous. They want to do it for money. They want to do it for whatever. Or am I going for legendary, uncompromising, unapologetic status standing on behalf of my people, really, to expose the world of Satan. And if that's true, then I have no choice but to continue. I don't have a choice. It's really a drive, but it's not something that I do entirely willingly. It's something that is, it just drives me. It's necessary. And that's why you're here. Necessary yes, blackness. Come on, man. We got to keep it necessary and we got to keep it unapologetically black. That's a fact. So this leads me to my um, next question. Um, we're going to go to a current events and what's happening in the world today, right? Yes, sir. Um, and I got some of this knowledge um, actually following uh, you on uh, Telegram. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got to follow him on Telegram. Cause yes, sir. Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, TikTok, you might not find them there. Yes, sir. You know, you'll find other people tweeting about them, but yes, you, you can't find them there. But you have put out a post, and I was like, wow, mm. that's the connection. Mm. Right there, according to what you was uh, explaining to everybody, there are over 
20 biotech companies mm -hmm. and pharmaceutical companies in um, Ukraine. Ukraine. Kiev, Ukraine, correct. Right? And the United States have interests yes. in these companies, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a tie-in between uh, what's happening in Kuwait, uh, Ukraine mm -hmm. and, and in Russia. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Well, the first thing is everyone has to look at the long history of the Ukraine as it pertains to America, the business and friendship that mm -hmm. Russia and America had. You have to look at the fact that America funded, uh, I would say, Afghanistan when mm -hmm. it came to getting the Soviet Union out of Afghanistan. America sponsored Osama bin Laden, who was an agent who worked on behalf of the United States government. They later on demonized him, trying to make him look like a terrorist. But they sponsored him with money to help to get the Soviet Union out of Afghanistan so that they could take a hold of all of the wealth, minerals, etc. <clears throat> Prior to that, of course, America had different relationships with Russia. And then, of course, the Ukraine when it comes to certain Nazi family bloodlines that are still there in the Ukraine to this very day. America's relationship with Nazi Germany and Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler gave a lot of credit to California and America for the American eugenics movement that sparked up and inspired the eugenics society that went into Europe and other parts of the world. And it technically started in Europe, but it blew up in America and then inspired the transition throughout the world. So we have to look at the long-standing history. That's the first thing. Secondly, we have to look at the Berlin Conference between 1884 and 1885. Okay. Where a lot of the countries in NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, came together and a lot of those countries are a part of those that were at the Berlin Conference. So Russia was there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you have Italy that was there, France was there. So look at who was there helping to break off Africa, basically saying, look, go ahead, uh, Berlin, you can take the Congo. France, you can take this part of Africa. Oh, yeah, Ghana, look, we're going to grab that one. Y'all can do this. They came together and pulled a gangster move mm -hmm. and said, this is what we're going to do. We're each going to get our own country and take it over, use the people as slaves, take the mineral resources, the oil, diamonds, etc. If you look at that history, first thing is, Africa nor black people have any stake in this fight to begin with. Absolutely. Number one. So our priority should be our people. Simultaneously, America bombed Somalia over a week ago hmm. while Russia was going back and forth with the Ukraine. Why did America go and bomb Somalia? So we should actually be more focused on that. That's one. Two, this circumstance between the Ukraine and Russia is Russia wants the Ukraine back to be under the Soviet Union because she used to be under hmm. Russia. They want it back. America is trying to argue with Russia because America has investments in the over 20 pharmaceutical slash biotech companies in Kiev, Ukraine, but particularly Bayer, Merck, Johnson & Johnson, GlaxoSmithKline, AstraZeneca. Those companies wow. America invested billions of dollars in, and particularly Johnson & Johnson, and of course AstraZeneca, and of course Pfizer and Moderna, invested billions in to get tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of doses of shots to be used here in America, and of course throughout the world. So what America is doing is not a humanitarian effort, a, oh, I care about the Ukrainian people. No, it is protecting a business investment. Mm -hmm. It is a business interest. That's all it is. It has nothing to do with anything else. So that's what people have to look at and understand. If America is not going to help people over in Syria, refugees from mm -hmm. Syria, Afghanistan, still homeless children, orphans, uh, Iraq, that America helped to make orphans and all this, you're not caring about any of those. You sat here and you gave asylum to people from certain European countries, but Haiti, just a few months ago, you would allow people to come in from there. Absolutely. See, this has nothing to do with anything dealing with a humanitarian circumstance. It is 100% business interest protecting of an investment, and it's absolutely hypocritical because you don't give a damn yeah. about the people. It's about the money. That's why they always say war is deception. Absolutely. And uh, these people that control mainstream media and that pushes the button of deceiving the people. That's correct. So I, I, I want to go back um, with the CDC. Mm -hmm. Just recently, they said that they was too optimistic early oh, on. brother. Right? <laughs> Is that a cold word <laughs> for saying we lie, uh, but we can't tell you that we lie? Brother. Because you know racism and white supremacy is when if you can 
lose if you must, but always cheat. Come on, brother. And it seems Come like, on, like they that. are cheating the masses of the people. What, what's yes. going on? No doubt, absolutely, emphatically, unequivocally, absolutely, certainly, they lied. What she did, the director of the CDC, Rochelle Walensky, what you just said, was she had a see what had happened was <laughs> <moment. laughs> <Those moments. laughs> right this is one of them moments yeah, okay. see what, what, what had happened was you know we you know we was a little too optimistic you know we thought to no 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 what had happened was that your plan didn't work and it was exposed quicker than you expected and people mm. on the inside came out and exposed it and you didn't plan for that mm. that's what really happened science from the nih came out and exposed certain circumstances scientists were brought before congress Subpoena before Congress, and they were given questions. Mm -hmm. Fauci was brought before Congress on a number of occasions. Rand Paul done, he done, he done bit into Fauci so many times. Yeah. He said, we did sponsor and fund gain-of-function research between America and the Wuhan labs, meaning research that you acquire by mixing animal DNA mm -hmm. with human DNA, or anything dealing with mixing humans with animals in any kind of way, shape, or form. America funded that between the Wuhan labs in China and here in America. I exposed that two years ago. Mm. We knew that. Yeah. So when she came out and said what she said, <clears throat> this is a layered thing. Number one, they cannot admit, they cannot show any accountability. Why? Because you have over 200 million people that took this shot in America. You have over a billion people who took it on the planet. If I admit that we did this, one, then that means an admission of guilt is punishable by law. This is number one. Number two, over 200 million people in America took this. America roughly has 330 million people. Wow. So you're telling me over a third of the population took this. If they decided to go into a class action lawsuit, America currently is over $30 trillion in debt. America does not have the money to afford. And they still owe uh, black $16 trillion for reparations. Brother, hell, more than that, if you really want to go yeah. there. So you owe us trillions already, or we back, back, back pay mm -hmm. over the, and you owe somebody else 30 trillion, because that's the other question, where is that money being owed to? But then, if people decide to go into a class action lawsuit, once they find out that these shots cannot be sued for if you are harmed or killed by them, once they find out that these were experimental, once they find out that the spike protein is duplicating inside of the body, damaging the immune system, and potentially removing the ability to reproduce, that is a fact. Mm -hmm. Once they find out all of this, and they find out you knew about it beforehand because the data show that you knew at least seven months in advance what the shots were doing to people in the trials. Yeah. And you did not reveal that data. Hence why Pfizer was trying to wait 75 years to reveal the over 420,000 documents. You tried to release 600 pages a month and a, a, a judge over in Texas said, no, 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 we ain't going to do that. You're going to release 55,000 pages a month, mm -hmm. and you have eight months to reveal all of the 420,000 plus documents. Once people find all of this out, over a million reactions, tons of deaths, miscarriages, Bell's palsy, myocarditis, pericarditis, encephalopathy, brain swelling, when they find out all of this, testicular swelling, when Nicki Minaj said that her cousins, or yeah. her brother's cousin, or friend said that they had testicular swelling, there were over 170 cases at that time. So she wasn't wrong, yeah. and that came out in the Pfizer data. So once they find out all of this, you don't have the money to pay for the damages you caused. So therefore, I for damn sure I'm not going to admit that we did this and that we were wrong. That's why that's coded language. Wow. But, you know, also on the flip side of that is that they tell you you can't sue the vaccine company. Come on, brother. And Come a on. lot. See, and this is why it's good for people to do their research, right? Yes. A lot of the stuff that you were saying, some of the words people are not gonna understand, like, what is that? What does that deal with? All you have to do is go to the CDC's website. It's a fact. They didn't list everything, mm -hmm. but they did list the adverse effects. They'll tell you on this day at 1900 hours, uh, within five minutes of taking this shot, it's a fact. 
uh, this person went into cardiac arrest. That's a fact. Just they, like that. They, they'll tell you uh, people that got rashes. And yes. It's on their website, but you got to click four or five buttons to get to it. Let me, let me help you with that. First of all, brother's been studying because that's exactly how I described. That's how I know he was researching. I was researching you, watching uh, with you. Come, come on, as you should. Like, as you, you should. Know, and then I go behind, oh, he said it's on the CDC website. Let me go look. That's a fact. We need to be able to prove it in no limited time. Don't rely on this brother that says, no, no, no. I put it out there so that you can get it so that nobody can bamboozle you. So Absolutely. that they can't lie to you. You see what I'm saying? So go to a website that makes it even easier. It's called openvares.com. It's an open source website. Open source website that they independently research. They go do exactly what you did, and they get all the data, and they make it easier for people to find. Because the CDC website makes it so difficult to navigate. Mm -hmm. You know, early on, so a lot of people, they just give up, say, I ain't about to look through this whole thing. But if you go to openvares, V-A-E-R-S, dot com, every week, they will see the updated negative reactions, the updated data, the updated oh, everything, wow. every Friday to your evening in real time. That wow. right there, see, that's why you can't bamboozle the people who are educated. You just can't. So that's why they hate us so much. Yeah. That's why they said, shut this nigga up now. <laughs> <laughs> Get him off of all the platforms because he is bringing out information that we don't want to be out. So, for example, because we, we brought up another point, the not being able to sue them. This is the real world. I can sue you if you punch me in the face. I can sue you if you mess up my car. I can sue you. If, if, hell, you run up in my house and steal something or whatever, anything. You can sue me for defamation if I talk bad about your character. Talking bad about my character. Just talking about me. I can sue you. But I can't sue you if you inject me with something that could potentially damage me for the rest of my life. I can't. Don't make no That's sense. criminal as hell. Even yeah. people who are for the shots don't agree with that. That's yeah. like, hold on now, play. That's a little weird now. All right? Even, even if I took it or what. That's kind of that's yeah. crazy. So... The reality is, over 200 million people that took this, when they find out even a third of what we know, do you think they give a damn nope. about this law? You think so? Over 200 million people, this is what America, you might want to pay attention to this. Over 200 million people and over a billion people on the planet, do you think they're going to say, ah, you know, hey, my bad, I'm going to just take an L. No, 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 hmm. I'm going to just take it. This is happening to my body now. Yeah. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me that shot took my mom out, not the virus. Yeah. That shot took my cousin out, not the virus. That shot took, oh man, wait a minute. You don't have a lot of angry people. Brother, because this is what is really happening to a lot of people. Yeah. And when they find that out, you think they're going to wait on your completely wicked, unjust, unfair law? We know slavery was legal. It was not moral. Mm -hmm. We know women being raped and all that was legal. It wasn't moral. Children being sex trafficked was legal. Not moral. Heaven still do it today. Absolutely. Black men being castrated, used as slaves, legal. Not moral. A law does not mean morality. That's right. So at this point, that law don't mean a damn thing. And specifically the law we're talking about is the NCVIA 1986. I don't use the V word because on YouTube you know y'all some punks. So mm -hmm. NCVIA 1986. Yeah. And the second one that is an updated version of that one specifically covers and protects Moderna and Pfizer. And that mm -hmm. law is the PREP Act. P-R-E-P-A-C-T. Once you read the PREP Act and you see, <laughs> CNBC said, look, you can't sue Pfizer or Moderna if any of the CV-19 shots harm or kill you. They just said it straight. Wow. On a news article, they say you cannot sue them. We're going we to continue to talk about... <laughs> It's far from over. What the real cause of this is, right? Yes. Because they, they, they not, there's a monetary game behind this, yes. but there's a more sinister plan. Correct. And we're going to talk about that sinister plan when we come back from a commercial break. Come on. This is Raheem Shabazz, and I am live here mm -hmm. with Rizza Islam. Let's get it, let's go. Necessary Man. Blackness Podcast. Peace. Peace and Black Power family, this is your host Raheem Shabazz and we are back from our quick commercial break and we are sitting here with the brother that, uh, what is it, 1600 Pennsylvania Street? Yes, yeah, so Pennsylvania Avenue. Pennsylvania yeah. Avenue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's making noise. <laughs> they have him on a watch list Come on. because of the truth that uh, comes out of this brother's mouth. Mm. You know, uh, wisdom is, is, is the sound that comes from mouth to ear, mm. and those with ears need to really be hearing what this brother is saying. So that's why 
I, I thought it was necessary to bring him to this platform so he, he can um, explain some of the things that y'all might have a problem with me saying. You know, sometimes <laughs> it takes other people saying, That's you're true. Like, you know what? That's true. Now I understand. <laughs> When all alone, I was just saying it, right, right. but not as eloquently as our brother, because he be doing his research, man. Come on, man. <laughs> you know, um, I, I try to keep up, but you know what? You don't got to know it all. That's right. That's right. That's you just got to know enough where you can make an informed decision That's and say, you know what? You're a liar. You're the devil, and Come I'm on. not taking the jack. Come on. So I, I, I want to um, ask you this, right? Because I, I was in a conversation with an individual that I highly respect. Yes, sir. And um, I was telling them, showing them, you know, through research mm -hmm. and, and what other people say, such as Bill Gates mm -hmm. and, and Melinda Gates, uh, about depopulation. Come on, yes, sir. So they think is this is not something that's exclusive to black people as far as taking a shot. Mm -hmm. You mean to really tell me that they're going to uh, harm and mm -hmm. possibly kill just as many, probably even more white folks just mm -hmm. to do this, to depopulate the uh, <laughs> earth of black people? Yeah. So if someone that is of that feeble mind mm -hmm. says that to you, how would you respond? First thing, Bill Gates, uh, Norman Linda Gates is a doctor. That's number one. I always want to make sure I open up with that because too many people believe that although his name gets brought up in medical circles, he's not in the medical circle. He's mm. not legitimately supposed to be mentioned in a medical circle. Yeah. He has a monopoly over the medical industry because of his money. Okay. That is it. Other than that, he's not legitimate. And if you want to even say anything to do with medicine, his family is a eugenicist family. He comes from a line of those, a part of the American eugenics his society, father. his father. So if you want to, if you want to go there, okay, then, then he's medically justified in that way. But his justification is to get rid of black, brown, and anyone who's melanated across the planet, number one. So uh, outside of that, he ain't no damn doctor. So I want to make sure we get that out of the way first. Number two. You have something called the National Security Study Memorandum 200, or the NSSM 200. That was authorized under Dr. Henry Kissinger, who was the 32nd Secretary of State under President Richard Nixon and, Nixon and Gerald Ford. And in that documentation, he specified, quote, depopulation should be the highest priority of U.S. foreign policy towards the third world. End quote. Mm. He specified depopulation to be the number one motive, the number one solution, the number one tactic, the number one agenda, the number one calculated maneuver to get rid of, at that time, two to three billion people across the planet. That has never come off of being government policy. Okay. We also had something called Global 2000, but they also yeah. looked at how we use food as a weapon. Okay. Under Jimmy Carter, you had someone who was a advisor to him by the name of Zbigniew Brzezinski. Zbigniew Brzezinski stated, quote, in earlier times, it was easier to control a million people than to physically kill a million people. He said, but in today's time, it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than it is to control, end quote. These are people who control policy mm -hmm. over your government. These are not just people talking on the side of the road who ain't got no power or no control, no authority, no influence. These are the ones that when they write it into law, it becomes effective in your city, in your state, in your school, around your neighborhood, your food supply, your water supply, etc. So when someone does not look at the depopulation agenda, if you don't know about the eugenics movement, if you don't know about murder, murdering people by zip code, hence why there are certain shots sent to black and brown and impoverished communities. Absolutely. Versus shots that are sent to communities that are of an upper class, more money, etc. That is a fact as well. And that is something that has been widely talked about in scientific circles. So for anyone who says, well, white people are taking a shot too. Sure, you've been taking shots for a long time. You do know they have a way of genetically prepping certain chemicals to affect only melanated people, right? Absolutely. You do know about Fort Detrick, Maryland, the United States Bioweapons Division of the United States government where they manufacture biological weapons that specifically target melanated people, right? You do know about the tetanus shot over in Nairobi, Kenya that sterilized over 500,000 women, right? You do know about the shot that was over in Zimbabwe 
that was killing so many children that 5,000 were dying every week, literally 20,000 every month. So again, we have to look at the fact that this stuff is calculated and the depopulation agenda is real. White people are taking a shot too. The evil elite, if you want to call them yeah. that, at the top. Sure, they don't give a damn about their poor white cousins. They'll sacrifice them too. That's a fact. Yeah. But when it comes to how the chemicals are orchestrated and how they interact with our genetics versus white people's genetics, it is definitely different. Right. That is the actual fact. And it affects, it affects us more. It leans our boys onto the autism spectrum at the rate of 236% more than Caucasian boys, admitted by Dr. William Thompson, who was one of the senior lead scientists over the CDC's vaccine division. That was admitted by him in 2014. It leans uh, black girls more to on that spectrum as well. But here's the difference: testosterone protects the boy, or the pardon me, the estrogen protects the girls versus the testosterone, which enhances the negative effects of the chemicals in that shot, specifically the MMR. I know I have to go into all these different areas, but I want to prove my brother's point. Yeah. All right, that's my point. I want to prove his point with overwhelming evidence so that anyone who goes into that that argument of, well, white people taking it too. Yeah, white people are eating and drinking and doing all the same type of things yeah. we're doing, but just like crack cocaine, it don't affect them as worse than it affects yeah. us yeah. because of our melanin and because it has a high affinity for melanin beings. So the, it enhances when it is taken by us. Mm -hmm. You know, all of what they do, it's enhanced with us. That's the difference. So, and they know that. And when, when you talk about different zip codes receiving different forms of medicine, all yes. food is produced on the farm. Come on. But when they distribute it to different neighborhoods, you notice that in what they would deem as the urban neighborhood, yes. the fruits and the vegetables yes. ain't the same. No. You know, so it's the same thing with this vaccine. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I wanted to um, talk about the CEO of Moderna. Oh, yeah, you're going, you going for the juggle with the business. Go ahead, yeah, brother. yeah, yes, sir. yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, um, war is deception yes. and, and, and business is war. Yes. So this man is in the business of making a vaccine. Mm -hmm. And he sold, what, 400 million shares? Mm hmm Mm -hmm. uh, 400 million dollars worth. 400 million dollars worth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of uh, Moderna. And he deleted his, his Twitter. That's a fact. Why did he do that? What, <laughs> what, 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 what is going on with that? Okay, let me ask you this question right here. Uh, Most like, people don't know that. Oh, bro. And guess what? I wouldn't have known that if I wasn't on that telegram. Come on, man. I'm look. not going to act like I discovered it. Oh, look. Look what I found. Nah, I was on that telegram saying, what? Look, see, that's Let brotherhood. Come on, that's brotherhood. You oh, know this is the truth. No, you're going to give credit to your brother. Give credit where you found it. If I found something somewhere else, I'm going to give credit to where I found it. Because there's no ego here. We need to get y'all the information that's so that you right. save your damn life. That's the point. So to validate my brother's point, if a black man did that, it's just randomly. They'd be after him. Quick, wait a minute, why'd you sell off your shares so quick? Wait a minute, that's, SEC. That's, that, brother, they be, wait a minute, FBI, be, wait, why, why, why'd you sell so many shares so quickly and why did you delete? Mm, what's going on here? No, 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 no. They know what's coming. This is my point. Everybody who took the shot, you were lied to, number one. You believe your mama who was a doctor, you believe your cousin who was a nurse, you believe your husband who was a chemist, you believe this person, that person, everybody who was talking who wasn't involved in the damn lab who was constructing the shots to begin with. You believe them because they had quote unquote credentials and medical degrees and all of this experience, but they did not have the exact experience in the exact laboratories where these exact concoctions were made at the exact time. If they were not there, then they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Absolutely. You have general knowledge about certain circumstances and topics, but you do not know the exact thing that was done there. I spoke with Kismikia Corbin. That's the, that's the that's black, the black woman that Fauci said, the shot that you are all taking, my African-American brothers and sisters, he was so disrespectful with that. Uh, was made by a black woman. I spoke with that black woman months before the shots were released. I want y'all to understand how real your brother is and how real this is. And what's, what was the conversation like? Uh, see, look, he's like, oh, shoot. <laughs> very, actually, very good conversation. Sister's okay. very, very bright sister. She's not a bad person. Good sister. But that's she doesn't into, know the that's, system. That's until you go back several years and mm -hmm. see her tweets. Yeah. Where she was expressing anti blackness of course. towards those that are foundational black Americans. Well, of course, brother. I and black men at that. Absolutely. 
I, absolutely. When you are in those type of circles, you don't have knowledge of self. You know how this goes. Yeah. You don't got knowledge of self. So I expect, as I can as Owens, I expect you to talk to me. You talk to me. Yeah. You with a white man, I get it. You, I got it, right? Fine. You guys want to do? That's all you. Me? Absolutely not. I'm black woman is where I want to be forever and ever and ever. However, when you are detached from the knowledge of who you are, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the devil, the knowledge of the time of what to be done, you don't know who you are, your history, your culture, you know how this goes. Yeah. You adopt whatever it is that's around you. So I didn't really look at that more so than looking at the data, the information as it pertains to what is about to be pushed onto the people. I need to know that because I clearly see that you don't know the system of white supremacy. Yeah. You don't know this enemy. You don't know Satan. You don't. A lot of our people, you know how this goes, bro? They don't know. They think they do. They get, we're getting better now, generally. But they do not know how sincerely wicked Man. this enemy is. Mm -hmm. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we cannot fathom the depths of Satan. Meaning you can't even put it inside of your head how low this devil will go. You don't understand. Like, you don't. Because our minds were not even wired to think like this. Right. We were yeah. righteous. Bro, Absolutely. we're not, we don't think about the stuff that they do. You have to be a very deranged type of individual, a deep devil to be comfortable with this type of wickedness. So, so the conversation with me and her is very good. But the problem is when you have people who don't have knowledge of self, who don't know the system, then of course, we can trust this and or we can trust that. Just like some of our people yeah. are telling us, look, man, we know about Tuskegee back then, but it's because they didn't give us, you know, it's because they, they didn't give us the shots. You know, they didn't give us the solution back then. You know, we had penicillin, but they didn't give it to us. Mm -hmm. It's because it would help. Really? I, I, I just be, I really get sick when I hear people do that. And some of us who get on yeah. these platforms trying to justify like Negro, you, you clearly don't know about that whole circumstance. Because yeah. my first question is, where does syphilis come from to begin with? Let's go there. You need to go to the- gotta take it back to the foundation. Yeah, you gotta go back to it, of the poor hygiene of white folks, because that's, you gotta start there. All right, you really wanna go there. But the point is, a lot of our people trust this government. Absolutely. And that was the problem. A lot of people who work for them, you gotta trust them really to work for them, especially if you're on that high level. You trust this government, you trust this system over here, you justify the evil, you excuse it and say it was just in the past, just in the past, because it takes too much effort and energy to look at how evil it is now. You don't want to think, you don't want to work hard, you don't want to change your own damn diet, you don't want to eat better, you don't want to stop smoking and drinking, even though I'm not judging nobody, but I'm saying, when it comes to your immune system, you don't want to do a damn thing that has anything to do with working to change and improve your own condition, but you think a damn shot is going to be magic coming from your enemy. The magic bullet. The magic bullet coming from your enemy that's going to solve everything. You're 320 that's pounds that's obese, and you think a shot is going to burn all your fat and boost your immune system. not going to happen. Come on, brother. So Let's talk kids. back um, on, on the sister. Um, I'm bad with names. What's her name again? Kizmikia Corbett. Kizmikia Corbett. Oh, no, also known as Kizzy Corbett. Kizzy, mm -hmm. yeah. I remember the whole uproar, and it's sad because, you know, we are always looking for a savior, and yes. this savior came in the form of a black woman. Not saying yeah. that they put a black her, woman yeah. can't save us. True. Absolutely. But you have to be careful when your open enemy presents a savior to you. Correct. And it's not someone that the people held up mm -hmm. and said, this is who we recognize as one of us, right? Correct. So they went deep down the rabbit hole on this system, right? But the peculiar thing about it, right, when we found out who she was and how she's really not for the cause, is that I haven't heard her name mentioned in any circles. I want to say in the last year, year and a half, True. and this is because with racism and white supremacy, once right. they use you as a tool, Correct. when that tool is done with it, they just break it. It's, right. it, it, it's, it's no up. longer uh, good. So I, I, I say that to say mm -hmm. this family, you have to be on the right side of history because you may get some money, you may get some notoriety, but when they're done with you, they're done with you. And, and on that point, I'll say this. See, this is when you know who is really for your people, really who's for your people. When I spoke to the sister, I spoke to her as a sister. Yeah. I called her my sister. I said, you may not have been called this before. <laughs> I told her, so I said, you may not have been called this before. <laughs> and I wasn't being funny. I said, but seriously, we had long conversations where I had to educate her. Yeah. You were scientists, but you were picked. Yeah. Remember this. The enemy selects you. 
and then we elect you mm. because we think it was all organic. No, it wasn't. You were picked and chosen. I told her. I said, as your brother, I'm telling you now, they are going to use you as the scapegoat when the negative effects of these shots start to come out, mm-hmm. start to be exposed, start to happen all across the world. You will be used, and they are going to throw you under the bus. I said, that's why they were so eager to announce you as the main one over the lab crew. I said, when have they ever been excited to put up a black woman and <laughs> praise her so much? Y'all was going off talking about Michelle Obama ain't even a woman in the wild. That's a man. I was doing all this stuff. But when you're so excited, America, to prop up a black woman, oh, look, she's a, no, no, I told her. I said, I'm telling you now, as your brother, I'm telling you, this is what they're going to do. I said, they don't give a damn about you. And she said, and you know what? I, she said, I don't, I don't, I can't say you're lying. She said, because it's been hard as hell being a black woman in this industry, being a scientist on this level. Yeah. She said, with all these white men that I'm having to work with, she said, I don't, I, she said, I can't say that what you're saying isn't true. She said, but Reza, I'm just saying so far in my experience, <laughs> which I understood. Yeah. I said, look, people can put on a good front around yeah, you, sis. Absolutely. They will, all, they, I said, you have the brains yeah. and the color. I said, you are a gorgeous, dark chocolate sister. Yeah. You are a perfect tool to be used. Perfect. I said, you need to understand how Satan is thinking. Get yourself out of it and yeah. think from their perspective. How can I use somebody to get to the core heart of black people? That is through the black woman. mother and the black yeah. woman. And I'm standing as a brother who protects black, black women. Woman. Yeah. I make it very clear. But I had to let her know, you have been strategically manipulated. Mm-hmm. And they omitted certain things from you so that you wouldn't see their intent. Trust me, sis. Trust me. I said, I'm, I beg you as your brother. I, I just, I sincerely encourage you to study more and to look at exactly why they are so eager. Yeah, well, she might have took your advice. That's why I'm really I appreciate it. No, nah, bro, I appreciate it <laughs> because, because once the, all the, you know, yeah. black men, there's, black, there's a lot of black women who say that now yeah. who from the hood and because they're hurt. They have trauma. They mess with the wrong guy. Mm-hmm. Got their heart broken. Whatever. We understand that. And vice versa. It's, it happens. So I'm not going to judge my sister on that. All right. But at the same time, if you did willingly participate, and I have to say this, yeah. because the honor of the minister was far kind, as the Holy Quran and the Bible says, that those who side with the enemy shall have uh, those who are fearful and unbelieving mm. will have their part in a lake that burns with fire. Ooh, so if you, if you want to sit here and side with your enemy, willingly is my only thing, which means she intentionally, if you intentionally did this, if any of us, any of us intentionally do this, you deserve what you get, whether if it is the hatred of your people, whether if it is the chastisement of God, whatever, if you willingly sell your people out, willingly sell your people under the bus to be Offered up to this beast to help mm-hmm. to kill your people, depopulate your people, rape your women, sell your children. If you willingly, intentionally, knowingly do this, you deserve exactly what the hell you get. You deserve it. But Absolutely. if you were sincerely innocent, I, you know, I'm not God. When none, neither one of us are the God. Yeah. So only God can have mercy on you. But I just pray, brother, that you know that she reaches out to whoever she can to do something better. And if she finds out all of this stuff and stuff start popping out, just like other scientists have, she might I, be the whistleblower. I pray she does. A lot of scientists came out and have oh, a yeah, whistleblower. I pray she joins that group. Absolutely. I actually seen you on um, I forget where it was, but um, it was a couple of scientists on there, mm-hmm. and um, you know, it, it's funny <laughs> they will agree with everything you say. Yes. But when it gets to that critical point. They just like, well, I don't know, and um, you know, we're doing further research, and <laughs> listen, yeah, we know this was an experimental drug, and that's what Come you on. need to just tell people. Come on, brother. So, was it March fifth? Y'all had the uh, second defeat the mandate. Um, the huh, I'm gonna tell, I'm talking about that. The date changed. Okay. But there's there's something. Oh, you gonna get it all today? But this this gonna blow up. Sorry, this yeah. y'all watch. This is gonna blow up because you you getting some juicy information on this. The first rally was January the 23rd. I, and and I seen it. I had a couple of people there. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I'm like, <laughs> interesting. I want to go, but. I know. I know. I, 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 you know, it's just time constraint, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I can't be everywhere at all times. Absolutely. But then when I seen it, I was like, wow. 
Yes, sir. So, um, I seen new snippets. I seen mm -hmm. you. I seen what's the sister name, Dr. Christina? Christina Parks. Yep. Parks. Mm -hmm. Riveting. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, verbiage that she used there. Mm -hmm. And um, then I went to go look for the whole thing because you know I don't want to be biased. I don't want to just see the black man and the black woman. Let me see what other people have to say. And they were saying that for some reason your speech. Is that true? Yes, sir. Was missing? Yes, sir. Removed. 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 Let's make that clear. Removed. From everybody else's. No yeah. explanation, no nothing. Not, you know, listen, we, this right here is not factual or actual, so we can't put that out, so we're just going to remove everything. It was just removed. Wow, the truth really got to hurt, man. Right. <laughs> They don't want everybody to say what needs to be said, and they're not, they don't want everybody to be a part of it. So are you invited to the second one? Oh, oh yes, I'm, I'm invited, but um, let me say this way. There's been this ongoing feud between the Nation of Islam and the Jewish community. Okay, let's make this clear. It's not going, you know, don't shut down the page. Just, <laughs> it's, it's, but this is just facts, right? We just know this. There's been this back and forth. One, because we just speak the truth, even if the truth convicts the negative things that black people do. Mm -hmm. We speak the truth about anything that's going on, period. Black, old, white, old, everybody, no matter. Absolutely. Period, right? We, we don't hold biases over here. That rally had a number of groups and organizations that were a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, there was a Jewish rabbi that spoke after I spoke, a Christian pastor that spoke, you had scientists, you had white, black, you had people who took the shot, people who didn't take the shot, you had Democrats, you had Republicans, you had people who were independents, you had Black Panthers who showed up, you had the RBG, you had Nation of Islam, you had Nation of Gods and Earth there. You, mm -hmm. you had so many people. Muslims, Christians, you, you had people that were there that were not supposed to be there. Y'all ain't supposed to be hanging out with each other. Tell you, what, what you doing? What you mean, what you mean, it's a Jewish rabbi with a nation of Islam? Minister, young youth minister in training? You got a Christian. This is not supposed to happen. On the steps of the Lincoln Memorial where Martin Luther King gave his I you know, dream speech, my speech was the one calling for unity among everybody. I say you remember call for unity among the religions call for the ending of religious arguing because this system don't give a damn about what you call yourself I'm gonna take you out period you don't only want to argue over that nonsense and then all them damn labels I'm even game. I like that you divide it because that means you're not gonna focus on me so let me go ahead and keep taking y'all out while you're arguing with each other mm -hmm. so I call for unity said nothing negative about any group whatsoever people loved it I, I spoke on behalf of the Honorable Mr. Farrakhan, I mentioned the name of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the name of Dr. Martin Luther King, you know, our greats, brother, really letting them know that this is something that we must do as a people. This is our time. What they had a problem with was that I mentioned Minister Farrakhan's name one too many times. Reza, is this conjecture? Is this, are you assuming this? We go with facts only, right? Yeah. My speech, out of three and, a, three and a half hours of a full event, you only take my nine minute speech out? Nobody else's? They what said you mentioned his name one too many times? What was said wasn't, first of all, wasn't said to me. Yeah. You already know. Yeah. All right, so that's, yeah. that's the first thing. They operate in the shadows. And the reason why I mention this is because out of all the groups that were there, you had tons of different groups and organizations that helped to put it on. Uh, there were some, some, of the, some people within the Jewish community who also helped to fund it as well. Yeah. Okay, if, if it's for the right purpose, no problem, right? But here's the problem with this. You remove my speech and say because Farrakhan is too divisive. But his little brother called for unity. How is that divisive? Yeah. You're a liar. You're a damn liar. You know you're a liar, but the problem is you have made a, a large picture of him. You painted this evil, wicked, devil <gasps> picture of this man for over 60 years. And his young brother gets on stage and demolishes and disproves all of that in less than 10 minutes. But you have spread so much evil across the planet, painted him in such a light that doesn't exist. And you cannot have that undid or undone. Because if that happens, then that means you got a whole lot of people that you need to apologize to, including him, number one. All members of the Nation of Islam, all black people, because you done ruined careers for so many black people just for standing with them, just for mentioning his damn name. Wow. You are evil and wicked to the core. And that's why they said we got to take that Negro speech out because that was on national television. You know, you know what the problem is? Why I got they something to say about the next round, yeah, too. All right. right. Why they can't just say, you know what? Because, you know, we know that there's individuals that's hard heads, thick neck, 
in rebellious, right? Yes, sir. And no matter what Minister Falcon say or do, they always gonna disagree with him, right? Yes. Why you can't just say, you know what, I agree with 99% of everything this man say, but on this one, I agree with, and we can all come together on this. But anything else, we can't come together on. Like, mm -hmm. and this is, how you say, this is what devils do. Yes. Brother. You know what I mean? They will lie to the end, even if they know it's the truth. Even if they know, listen, he has a voice that's just as big as, as ours and us coming together. We can really get this truth out here to the masses of the people. For this one time, this one day, this nine minutes and how many seconds? Oh, nine minutes and ten seconds, I believe. Nine minutes and ten seconds. We're going to have him talk to y'all about the wickedness of the uh, jab. Y'all won't even do it. To save your life. To save your life and your, your children. children's life. The, the generation is going to White you. children. Brother, I've been speaking on these shots for nearly 10 years. Yeah. Long before this circumstance. This is why everybody who jumped on it recently, I, I love it. Because this is what we've been fighting for. Finally, black boys get involved. Thank you. Ain't no ego. Forget the just reason. No, forget that. Get involved. You know, come on. Talk about it. I'm, I'm happy. Here's the problem. Nearly 10 years I've been opening this up. Meeting with politicians, educating them, getting laws passed. Getting laws prevented from being passed? Y'all don't even know this. Protecting tens of millions of people. New Jersey, uh, LA, Atlanta, California, Georgia, you name it. And you mean to tell me, all these rallies that I've been going to, vast majority, as a matter of fact, every single rally in my nearly decade of opening up and, and exposing the subject of vaccines, the majority of people have been white. Mm -hmm. So I'm fighting for white families too. You mean I've been fighting as a member of the Nation of Islam? I'm the one calling you a devil, right? <laughs> Let me right. I'm I'm calling you a devil, but I'm fighting for your children at the same time and mine too because I know that this, that Satan for real don't give a damn about me or you. Of course, I'm unapologetically black, so we fight for our people first. Yeah. Let's make that very clear. However, since you're here too, yeah. let's just be mature about this, right? I'm fighting for your children too, I, but you cannot, you can't let. The truth get out because that truth is going to undo the things that you rely on to maintain your superiority. And by you maintaining your superiority, that's the only way you like to be in control. But you don't like nobody who is black to be in control and you don't want the people to listen or follow the black person. But you want to use the black person to get the people to come out to listen to you. And that is what they were trying to do with me. Oh, wow. Use me to bring the masses of black people to get their attention, to bring the artists and the celebrities and the hip hop community and the conscious community and all that. And it's like, when I caught them on it, I was like, I don't know who the hell you think you're dealing with, but I, I'm not, the, and I didn't get paid for that either. Yeah. I just want you to know, like this, it's always been here, bro. Yeah. I'm not one of them. And I don't know if they tried to test me on that and they thought, well, let's see if he'll bend. Does he really follow Farrakhan? Is he really an unapologetic young black man striving for the people? Is he really standing in integrity? Or can we offer him a price and he will bend his morals? See, that's the type of stuff, bro. That you do. That's the stuff, brother. The next rally that they're planning, they sent a message to one of the scientists who sent it to me and who they, the, the scientist was pissed off mm -hmm. and, and was so mad to even have to send that to me. They said, Reza, I am mad for you, but I don't even understand how to respond to this. They said, oh my God, Reza is so powerful. We love him, blah, blah, blah. You know, the Nation of Islam, because they're always trying to separate me from the Nation of yeah. Islam. And I'm like, don't see, I'm going I'm to go off on your ass. You might have a comment. <laughs> like, seriously, I don't know who you think this yeah. is. You will not take me away from my brothers or my sisters. Yeah. I am a FOI in the Nation of Islam. Go to hell if you think otherwise. Mm -hmm. You're not going to offer me no money to try to separate me, bid me up, and then kill me later when I expose your ass. I know right. what you do. <laughs> it's old and it's tired. You yeah. do the same thing. You've been doing it for so long. It's let it go. But. They sent a message and they said, we love Rizzi, he's a great oratory, great speaker, blah, blah, blah. We want him to be the keynote speaker at our next rally. Robert Kennedy Jr. was a keynote speaker at the last one. Okay. So because they're coming to L.A., that's our hometown. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want the hoods to come out. That's what it is. You <laughs> yeah. want the hoods to come out. You want the, the, the artists to come out. But they said the message, we just have to set some ground rules. I already know what it's going Brother, on. Brother, first of all, who the hell are you talking about? We have grown <laughs> folks over here. Yeah. We need to set some ground rules. See how, you see, see how Satan always had to come out? The only rule, it wasn't even rules. It wasn't even, it was, it was singular. It wasn't plural. It wasn't multiple. Yeah. It was one. That one rule. 
can he not mention Farrakhan's name in his speech? Brother, the level, the depth that you have to go to be so disrespectful. Who the heck do you think you are? You think I actually want to be brought into your circle? You think that I can become a sellout like so many other niggas who you broke easily? You think a dollar <laughs> is going to get me? Mm -hmm. Offer me a million. I'll tell you, shut up and your ass go to hell. Respectfully. Yeah. Don't you ever play me like this. I'm not one of these niggas on the internet. I'm not a TikToker, an Instagrammer, a, TikToker. a YouTuber, yeah. and no shade to anybody who has these platforms because, yeah. of course, we all use them to help to get the word out. But I am a real-life brother activist in the community who's been doing this for 22 years come March 17th. Mm. I've been out here. Don't play me and don't disrespect us as a people to think that, oh, this is another black man we can have bend over and come to our movement to bring his people so that we can look like we have numbers to be legitimately seen in front of the eyes of the government because nobody was listening to white folks in this movement until black people jumped on it when the Nation of Islam took a hold. And you know what? I never, I never really had, um, I'm not going to say no interest in um, the whole uh, situation surrounding vaccines. Right. I, I did know about um, people that have autism mm -hmm. and, and the adverse effects they've been going through because I, I read about it. But when COVID came out, that's when the lid was blown for me, you know, mm -hmm. um, my thing is, everybody knows the school to prison pipeline. Right? Absolutely. So, you know, I'm always like, you gotta uh, pick your battles and, and pick your fight. Mm -hmm. Now, there's so many other social justice uh, movements that I wanna be a part of, but I'm like, you know what? I'm more effective over here. I'm yeah. more effective over there. Um, but I was one of the individuals mm -hmm. where I was like, the brother speaking? I'm going. So I was there when you went and did the uh, speech at the CDC. Yeah, you was there. And it was March like, third, was you had third. all the black people over here, and then we all came together. On, and so everything that you're saying is it, actually being manifest. And they seen that. Yes. You know what I mean? You because are endorsed. it was all white people that goes out there in that protest. Correct. But to bring that amount of black, because I use the only face, recognizable face that I knew there. I didn't know nobody else. And then when the black people showed up, oh, there's the brother, oh, there's the sister. Mm -hmm. So they definitely are um, using you, you know what I mean, to a certain degree to uh, get the word to black people, which, you know. We've been um, doing that. That's not the problem. Yeah, yeah, that's not the problem. Yeah. The problem is, you know, you're trying to um, mandate on, that I don't say uh, the honorable. Minister Farrakhan's name, like, come on, that's crazy. So, what what, what was the end result? I know what the end result was, right. but <laughs> is there going to be another rally? Or are you going to be participating? They they are going to have that rally. They are now trying to apologize profusely. Now, see, yeah. here's the funny thing: they will never apologize. Never. This is what made me think. So they going on an apology tour? They will. <laughs> he said they will. You're telling what do y'all do to us? Yeah. We say, ah, I don't like that dude. Oh, you don't like me because I'm Jewish? You're anti-Semitic. No, I don't like you, uh, bro. You. Just the end of it. I didn't talk about your religion. I don't like you. So, because you said that, okay, yes, you will be on an apology tour. Mm -hmm. You will. Absolutely. We're going to publicly bring you out. Oh, if you, if you don't want to do that, that's, per that's perfectly fine. I told them, I said, I will not be participating. Yeah. I won't be. And I said, unless you come and sit down, bring the person who told you to send that message to me from the Jewish community. Bring them out, and then you, who's the main planner, come together, and we all sit down and discuss this and have a discussion, and you apologize, you make it right, and you fully atone, go through the eight steps of atonement to make it right. Yeah. Unless you do that, I'm not participating. I don't need you. Y'all call me. Yeah. So let's get this clear. I don't give a damn about being put on national television. I don't give a damn about nothing that you think you can offer me. You have to come correct when it comes to our people. Farrakhan represents our people, Absolutely. and he represents the righteous of all humanity, but he is that man. He's that one. So don't ever get it twisted. Tell me not to mention him. You damn near telling me don't mention black folk. Not real ones. Mm -hmm. You want niggas. You don't want black folk. That's right. Speaking of Farrakhan. Um, and, uh, slaves, not niggas. You want slaves, not black folk. Yes. Save his day. Yes, sir. Man. 
Swan song. Yes, sir. <laughs> and he um, gave you their flowers. You know, yes, what type of feeling that was to have the Honorable Miss Falcon in the middle of his speech. Say, where's Rizzo at? Where's Rizzo at? And, and just give you your flowers. But I'm still learning to understand it. I am. Because this is the second Savior's Day in a row. That he where he's this? done that. Oh, okay. Last year. This year. That just lets me know that clearly whatever it is that I'm doing by following his example, exposing Satan, empowering the people, helping to bring solutions to the people, what they need, I have to just continue doing that. That's all. Because for that yeah. caliber of our people, one of the last legends we have, you're talking about Dick Gregory, Malcolm X, Elijah Muhammad, you're talking about the Panthers, Brother Huey P. Newton, Bobby Seale, you, you're talking about you know uh, Fred Hatch, you're talking about all of our leaders going back to Marcus Garvey. You know, for that caliber, to mention you by name, brother, I, I don't feel worthy, bro. Yeah. Like, really. You know, so I, I just strive to live up to it. That's, that's my deal. But I know the job isn't done. Mm -hmm. The work isn't over. So, But that then let me know when he said, boy, you light him up. I said, okay, we bring lit. Let's keep going. That's all. I was like, some things I can keep going. I thought he was going to say something like, brother, you just calm down a little bit. You won't save his neck. You just chill out. But of course he wouldn't say that. Yeah. But I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. I heard my name come out of that man's mouth, who I believe is the the crusher of wickedness today. Mm -hmm. The word Christ means one anointed with power by God to crush right. the wicked. That's why his name is so yeah. feared. They don't mention his name. Don't mention it because they're so afraid. I believe he's the Christ of today. There's over there were many many different Christ, but mm -hmm. he is the crusher of wicked. I believe that, bro. And you know what? I I thought. Like, I remember you um, talking about it. Make sure y'all come out to L.A. March uh, mm -hmm. 5th. And then that's why I asked you, how was it? Because yeah. I never heard nothing about it after that. It switched See up. what happened? <laughs> y'all had the brother on. He got the word out. Because I knew about it. And everybody yep. else. But as soon as you pull the foolishness, come on, bro. I didn't even know y'all had a new date. Come on, no bro. one knows about the new date. Come on, Because y'all trying to pull some foolishness. Y'all got to stop that. That's a fact, man. It's just, again, it's real sad because the white scientists around me, when I think it was only two of them that found out, they were like, what? What do you mean? You can't mention who? You mean your leader? <laughs> they said, you mean your, your leader? They said, you can't. Yeah. What? They said, I crazy, what do you? I said, that's how you know it's not y'all. Yeah. Tell one of them Jewish individuals not to uh, mention the word Torah. Oh, come on, brother. Don't mention uh, Moses. Don't, uh, yeah. Don't mention Shalom. anything. Uh, should, don't, don't mention, no, don't mention anything. It's like, how this is anti-black racist act? <laughs> really? The ADL has me on the list. A historically racist organization. Yeah. Jewish ran historically racist yeah, organization. You absolutely. put Malcolm X on the list. You put Marlon King on the list. Asada Shakur on the list. On the ADL list. Brother Reza Sam is on that list. Farrakhan's on it. Like, you're not our friend. You see what I'm saying? So again, it's not all Jewish people. It's the evil, wicked ones at the top who pretend to be Jewish, like the evil, wicked ones at the top who pretend to be Muslims, and evil, wicked ones at the top who pretend to be Christians who practice evil. All of this has to end, bro. It definitely does. It all definitely of it does. It's a new day and time. Um, during my time, we had a message to the black man. Come on. In this day and time, we got a message to the millennium. Yes, sir. Yes, right? sir. And for those that don't know, that's the brother's book. Yes, sir. Um, I don't have a copy, but hopefully I can get one today. You got one in the car. All right. Just I'm going to buy a copy from the brother, and um, I'm going to get an autograph copy. This book is what, this is what I'm being taught. Mm. That this book, Message to the Millennium, is to this generation what message to the black man was to my generation. Wow. So me, being who I am, trying to um, raise the consciousness of this generation, I got to get that book. Yes, sir. And, and when I say that, uh, that book is message to the millennium, mm -hmm. is what uh, message to the black man was to me. It is not my words. This is from people that have read it. Wow. As you know, my sister, Ebony, yes, big yes. supporter of yours. Absolutely. Ebony, I told you I was going to do this Shout interview. Shout my sister, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I want to get that book. Um, when you do come out and you do have it, it's always sold out. And I think the last yes, time sir. I seen it, it was like, oh, he just signed the last copy. Yes, yeah, sir. Like, Damn, I'm waiting too long. Yeah. So it went up there for anybody else. Yeah. No, I got you today. Okay. Um, where can they get it at? ReasonIslam.com. Okay. It's not on Amazon, it's not anywhere else. 
they are banning it from certain prisons now. Wow. I guess a warden or two read some of them pages was like, nah, we gotta get that out of here, like like new Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. You can't know. get that no more? In the, no, in, in the prisons? No, oh, the new wow. Jim Crow is banned from a lot of, a lot of prisons. <sighs> they said it's gonna cause an uproar in the prison. For example, when it comes to war, one major way that you cripple the opposition is by hitting their pockets. Mm. You go after the economics. Yeah. So if I was to like what they go over Russia, bro, of course, they are trying. That's why Russia went back to the gold standard and say, yeah, America now what? Oh, cold move. Yeah, talk, talk oh, about that. Oh God, cold move. I thought they was going to. I thought they was going to try to do uh, Bitcoin and crypto. That too. They, and then the White House now they're saying that they're going to regulate it. And yes. That and the other. Which I told people the White House was going to do. Wow. Like cryptocurrency, you 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 gonna get around the Federal Reserve? You think so? Federal Reserve already is not a government organization. That's a that's a gangster group outside the Constitution. Yeah. The Constitution, Congress is supposed to control the money. So, so the way that, that crypto is set up is decentralized, yes. right? How can they do anything? Well, they're gonna probably make their own coin. Absolutely. Definitely. But we still could continue to use Bitcoin mm -hmm. or do something else. It's just like we when we Come up with something. Mm -hmm. This wicked government yes. does they gotta everything have to undermine it. The devil, Satan, ain't about to let you be free. He wants you to think you free. Wait a minute, okay? Because people are reason they, they can't control it. Okay, let me hold on. Where do you live again? You live in America. <laughs> Chill out. Yeah. Just, just, just for a second. Don't be so emotional. Like no, no. Because what you want to do is defend something. Like I don't want to be a slave again. I'm with you. Yeah. But don't be a damn fool as to believe that Satan don't have a, an ability to put his hands in it. Do you control the means of communication? No. Do you own Verizon? No. Do you own T-Mobile? No. Is, you, do you know the executive orders of the president? He, one of the executive orders is for him to have the ability to control all means of communication. Mm. It's like what Putin so, is doing. Brother, you can't get Facebook. You can't brother, get Twitter. You can't oh, get Twitter. Oh, oh, that never, wait a minute. So these are applications. So if I can control applications and I can control any of the means on that application, don't you need to have a Coinbase installed on your phone? To access your wallet, don't you have to? I'm sorry. Yeah, shut your phone down. Who controls the Wi-Fi? Who control? I'm sorry. T-Mobile, because it's a communication apparatus, has contracts with the United States government, CIA, particularly FBI, and also the NSA. Are these not government entities and organizations? If they deem cryptocurrency to be a terrorist aid, There's an aid no to terrorism, do you know what I'm saying? Listen to how Satan, you got to know how Satan works, is all I'm saying. The possibility. I'm not saying to give him so much credit. Yeah. But I'm saying, just look at it so that you can plan accordingly. That's all I'm saying. Satan can do certain things. He can. But when you're talking about cryptocurrency, digital money, and coin, don't ever think that the United States government does not have a way of getting their hands in it. You know, That's I, all I'm saying. I, never, I really never looked at it like the way that you, you just said. Mm -hmm. Because it's on a blockchain. Yes. Uh, and, and you can't like... Do you um, own the internet? Yeah, you can't... Uh, I just um, want to know. You know, hack the blockchain to get into... But you can stop... You can say, listen, Verizon, any IP address that comes through here cannot connect to Coinbase. Really? Any address that comes through here cannot connect to uh, Robinhood or, or traders view or wherever Bitcoin is sold at. If this is an accessory to the, if this is an accessory, if we have deemed America, deemed just like they deem black people who are inspired by our love for one another, who will stand up and fight for who we are and defend ourselves, they call us black identity extremists, yes, FBI. Yeah. If they deem that cryptocurrency is an aid to terrorism, is an accessory to terrorism, it's they can the then have that removed because it is an accessory to terrorism and under Title 18, subsection 5 or Title 18 of the United States Code, domestic terrorism, they have certain laws that can go towards removing cryptocurrency from certain areas. Well, in this area, crime is high. There's also a number of users of cryptocurrency here. We can shut it down there. You, you got to understand how Satan works. Don't think this is too far-fetched. Learn your enemy. That's all I'm saying. You really all you got to do is look at 9-11 and a lot of these uh, rules and regulations dealing with Terrorist comes out of yes. what happened in 9 11. The brother, this is why, for example, with Putin with the gold and then returning it back to the gold standard. Yeah, explain That's, that. If you have a gold coin right now, not your white sky daddy slave master baseball cards like Dave Chappelle said, or dollar, yeah, because you was dollar. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this slave owners on this back. No, no. If you have a gold coin, that, that's a gold coin. 
Yeah. It's worth over a thousand dollars for a gold coin right now in America. Mm. You can use that and do whatever you want to do with it. Nobody's gonna turn down gold. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? That is not under their control like it used to be. Anybody who has gold, hold on to it. See, that is one of the only surefire, most secured things. Gold, silver, if you have it physically. Mm -hmm. But anything that is paper that's supposed to be backed by the gold, what's your name? Anything that's digital, if it's digital under the communication apparatus, the satellite that you and I don't own, mm -hmm. then you are still under the control of those who own that thing by which you are utilizing it through as a via to accomplish what you call freedom. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying to stop using it. I'm saying use it wisely and flip it into more of the physical, tangible things. Buy land, get gold and silver, get things that add and build in wealth and in investments. Do that. The physical, physical, tangible things. Be smart about it. Find investments to flip it into. That way, you you know that if they try to shut that down, you got all your wealth over here. You can sell this, make some money. You got that. This is building. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So Just, basically, the United States tried to uh, do a chess move on uh, Putin, right. and uh, he reversed it. Pretty much. Said, you know what? We're going to use gold as a standard. Russia switched and said, we're going to bring it back to the <laughs> I said, oh, that's gangster. Yeah, that's, that's, gangster. That's, that's gangster. That's what America used to be on. Mm -hmm. Gold and silver. Remember that. You're talking about President John F. Kennedy. That's why they took him out. That's why I assassinated him in the first place. Mm -hmm. With Executive Order 11110, he removed the power from the Federal Reserve to print and coin the money and return it back to Congress where it belongs. So the federal banker said, oh, you better not your damn mind. Take him out. Yeah. Boom. That's how this goes. This is, you, you, you need to know the devil. That's what, you need yeah. to know Satan. If you don't know Satan, then you talk in a way that's so foolish. <laughs> and out of this damn world, you just so you in a space somewhere. Brother, come down here and really understand what type of enemy you're really dealing with. And that's why uh, Millie Fuller, where he said, if you don't understand racism and white supremacy, everything, everything else, else is going to be Boy, you know, he was on point. He was definitely on point. So listen, I'm not gonna hold up too much of your time. Yes, sir. Um, is there anything that I didn't ask you that I should have asked you <laughs> that you want to leave with our people? But before you answer that, right? Yes, sir. Um, land. Yes. That is where I'm putting my money at, right? Smart. Because I, I, I you know, I own some stock. Mm -hmm. I do online trading whenever I have time, and I make a significant amount of money mm -hmm. in that. Boy, <laughs> man, they, they, mm -hmm. <laughs> this crypto, mm -hmm. ah, man, mm -hmm. it, 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 ain't, it ain't looking good. You know what I mean? Yes, Everything sir. is down. And, um, you know, sometimes it, it's not a bad thing, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, the stocks, it goes up, it goes down. Correct. Um, and they play you, just, you, you just trade with the trend. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't always have to make money when stocks is high. You, Bet against right. the stocks, right? But my thing is land for now. Yes. It, you know, nothing trumps land. We know that you get the biggest tax breaks when you're dealing with agriculture. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. get the biggest tax breaks when you're dealing with land ownership, yes. right? Um, you're a land owner. Yes. I am a newly land owner, right? Yes. With Lakes and Summerfield. How important is it for our people to own land? The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, all that we need is in the land. Everything we need is in the land. From the ability to grow food, to the wood, to build homes, to the minerals, to the water, everything is in the land. If you do not have land, I'll say when it comes to the United States government and in their laws, the only person who can technically be considered a citizen is a Caucasian male landowner. Mm -hmm. That was the old way of thinking about it, that was the old law. Caucasian male or primarily landowner. If you don't own land, you're still a slave to a degree. Mm. You have to own the land. An owner is who has the ability to stand up and speak with our chest. You have to own the land. Everything you need is land. Everything that you do everywhere you go is on some form of land. Even if it's water that has a boat, which is land on the sea, it is the land. So you have to get it. That way you can truly build freedom. Whatever you want to go to, whatever you're trying to access, it's always going to be predicated upon how much land you own, whatever it is that you own that's on the land, etc. So we don't want to have a, own a house mm. without owning the land that the house is on. I don't want to have to pay somebody else 
I own this. That way we can have something to stand on as a people. We have to own our own everything. But in order for us to have everything to put on, we have to have that thing upon which it stands on as the foundation first. We have to own land. There is no way around this. I always tell people land is the basis of freedom. Absolutely. You don't have land. I don't care what you're talking about, how many people you're talking to. It Come ain't on. even a movement. It's a study group. Come on. You got to have land. <laughs> it's a study group. Come yeah. on. It's a study group. You got to have land. Yes. You know what I mean? Because if not, man, then you, you, you just a teacher that's standing up in front of a classroom. Yes. But when you have land, you are truly living mm -hmm. because not only can you uh, pass down generational wealth, but as you said, you can clothe yourself. Mm -hmm. You can feed yourself. Mm -hmm. You can heal yourself mm -hmm. with, with, with having land and getting the minerals and growing certain herbs mm -hmm. and taking vegetables. And um, there's nothing else in the world that... Uh, can allow you to do that. So with this, man, I'm going to say this was a great eventful <laughs> interview. Yes, um, you got any events, anything coming up? Oh, man, it's a lot of stuff coming up. Um, just go to breezeislam.com. That's where you'll be updated, the different flyers of the events. But it's, okay. it's getting major, brother. Major. After this, uh, Mike Tyson is going to interview me. Brother T.I. is going to interview me. Oh, wow. DCM Fly 85 South. Like okay. Now, listen, <laughs> you know you know where I'm going, right? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yo, they had Fauci on there? Brother. <laughs> okay, look, when that happened, that's when I hit BC. He said, nah, brother, we bring you on next. I said, you got them right. Okay. I was like, if you don't, I'm blasting you. You know what? So yeah, I love I, my brother Y'all made, made up, y'all made up by, 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 by yes. doing that. But you know what would have been even better? You know what would have made y'all a household name? If y'all would have had him on there and then brought Rizza as a surprise guest. Come on, man. Why y'all think that, man? <laughs> Come on, they don't even go have him. Up. Come on, man. Don't, like let get, don't let me get his number. <laughs> he need to be like, a producer on one of these shows. I'll be like, you're our special <laughs> guest today. And I'll be like, hold on, we get some special difficulty. Hold on. Right. Who is that? Is that Rizza there? Right. Okay, we got two special guests today. <laughs> Come on, brother. Yeah. See, that's what you're thinking as a general. That's yeah, war tactics. Yeah, not a... Yes. Because yes. y'all will never be in the same room. I know he will not get on the same platform as you. No. And it, it's just telling me, it just goes to show you mm -hmm. when truth shows up, what happens to falsehood. It vanishes. So he was on, he, it must have been like a live remote. He didn't actually no, come to the you. studio, right? Or he, no, live I, remote. I know he ain't coming to that. Like, no, he's not doing that. It was about 20 minutes and he's trying to push this pump booster and it's like, you mean the booster? The booster? Yes. I thought the mandate and everything was over with. It is. But Satan's still going to try to get you. What? They want you for all that money. It's money. They, they like, Fox, you better go out there and push them shots. We're going to invest in these bins and go get them. Yeah, we still. We still <laughs> they pimping Fox, you know. Uh, he's making money, too, on the other side of it. <laughs> that's crazy, man. Fox is like a partial pimp prostitute. Just to be honest. Because he's making money from these shots. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But he's also being pushed. By the government to push the shots, other shots to the economy. So you, know, you know what's sad though? Mm -hmm. When he is 90 years old, if he lives to be that long, mm -hmm. and he's on his deathbed, he's gonna come out and tell the truth, or he's gonna write a tell all book. And, that, and that's usually what mm -hmm. happens to these individuals. And you know, a lot of people want to express sympathy. Oh, well, he did come out, he no, spoke. Bro. Nah, he knew it. He knew it when it when it was popular. Yes. You should have did it then. Yes. But brother, man, I want to thank you, man. I know you got a busy day, man, and um, this platform is always open to you. Appreciate um, that. Our name says it all. It's necessary blackness, yes, and sir. if you don't have melanated skin. You will not be appearing on this podcast. It's all right. We might have something else for you. You, you know, because there's a lot of people that's non-melanated and they want to be on the right side of history, and True. I respect that. True. But I was always of the belief that we just need to have one thing. That's our home. And that's okay. You know what I mean? Everybody and, else and that, this. That, and that's this, you know, and I might have another podcast where, you know, Intersectionality. Nah, nah, it's, yeah. <laughs> Intersectionality. They just make it a bad name when they use right. it in certain um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, places. But yeah, brother, I uh, thank you, man, for coming by, man. And like I said, man, you're always welcome. Come on, bro. It's all love, man. All right. Yes, sir. Peace and black power, family. We out. Yes, sir.